boys and girls. Oh my word, what a week and oh my god. Uh the 18th was my birthday. 19th was an event. 20th was an event. 21st was an event. I didn't stop my birthday from the 18th until yesterday being the 21st. Woo, what a weekend. But now we are here on a fine Monday evening. And we are at the home stretch of 25 interviews in one month. Are we crazy? Yes, we are, my friends. But look who we have today to start off our final week of STP is one beautiful, one be Love this kid. Oh, my God. This is Throwing the Pot with Donkey Cade and my very special guest. One Leo Sparrow. Thank you so much for joining the show with us, my friend. That's right. Here I am, the King of Kale, the Green Machine, the Son of the Sun, the Earth Champion, <laughs> Leo Sparrow. Happy birthday, Don. Oh, thank you. I wasn't starting, you know, with the whole birthday spiel so I could get a happy birthday. I thank That's you. Okay. I thank it works. you so much. Uh, <laughs> but I really just wanted to start it off because I'm telling you, Leo, what a hellified weekend we just had. Uh, we were yeah, at Coliseum. Pretty big weekend. Oh, uh, uh, we see. This is why we get to talk to the talents and we get to kind of chit chat uh, behind the curtain, just a smidge. You don't have to let us all the way in, but just a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, we we went to Coliseum Pro Wrestling in Bridgeport. We returned to the same place. It's almost like a sister promotion working here because they're brand new. Uh, and then we have BST Blood Sweat Tears Wrestling. They've been around for a few years, making some splashes. Big giant event. The Kier Lucas Chase versus Dustin Flash Waller in a ladder match. Ooh, baby. Uh, and then we had Shut Up and Wrestle at Kevin Landry's Combine in uh, Holyoke. My love, Cindy Hart. She's uh, the home base ring announcer up there. So it was a lot of wrestling, a lot of even more fun to be had with the friends and family at our wrestling events. Uh, Mr. Spiro, uh, you said you had a busy weekend. Please fill us in. What did you do this past weekend? Sure. So uh, Friday... I was at uh, ISPWs, the Independent Superstars of Pro Wrestling in Butler, New Jersey. And okay. I was, uh, me and my partner, GKM, we make up the Birds of the Sun. We're their tag team champions. And we had a TLC match, three-way triangle TLC match for uh, the tag titles. And we lost, but we won't mention that. Um, I, yeah, it, it was a rough one. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. TLC, they, they, these specialty matches like these, um, they say, because, <clears throat> you know, I'm not getting in that ring. I'm built like a candle, my man. I shatter like peanut brittle. Uh, they say, the talent, uh, that it takes years off of your career comparing to traditional matches. You get in with the, uh, the question of weapons being ladders, tables, and chairs. Oh, my. Uh, so you never know what the hell is going to happen. And I don't mean to cut you off about your busy weekend, but I just wanted to pahuze. Uh, real quick, that's French for pause. I just wanted to stop right there real quick because you have to uh, go into these things with like, holy cow, things could really get crazy real right. quick like that. We went into it knowing that it was going to hurt, and it, it, it did. Um, if you saw the, the last the way I lost the match was the powerbomb me from the top rope onto a table. Uh, and notice I said onto a table and not through a table because the table did not break. Uh, but uh, uh, you being a talent, me being a fan, I'm sure this question is posed or has been wanting to be posed. It's got to hurt so much more when it does not break, does it not? It, it, I, it's like I hit the floor. It's, oh. like, it's yeah, nothing moved, oh. nothing budged, nothing. It was, oh. it was awful. I'm sorry. Uh, it's whatever it happened. It's the name of the game. Uh, but uh, uh, Saturday, <laughs> I drove up to um, Saugus, Massachusetts, where okay. we went to Kowloon's because the uh, major wrestling figure podcast uh, is Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. They had a live show at Kowloon's, and I always go to their live shows and help them uh, coordinate backstage wise, get all oh. the guests ready. Um, run their meet and greet, stuff like that. So I did that. And then we had a very fun, I would call it night, but it was more of an evening on their outdoor tiki bar, which was incredible. So fun. Very cool. I was introduced to the drink uh, High Noons, which are like a spiked vodka soda, I guess. Um, 
Sure, sure. I, I had a fair, fair share of those. Sunday. <laughs> um, what did I do Sunday? Jeez. I stayed <laughs> in Massachusetts overnight, and then I went to Beyond Wrestling, uh, Wrestling oh. Open, and American Rana in the same day. Yes. So I went uh, Unfilled Sunday. I mean, not saying that the pre, especially the vodkas and sodas, but I'm just saying American Rana. I've been to two night, uh, two K nineteen American Rana over at Foxwoods. There was probably like three, four thousand people there. Uh, Beyond yeah. always puts on a banger, Slobberknocker barn burner. Uh, but what a weekend! Uh, what a Sunday to do wrestling open and then back to back events they had running here uh, because. Right. They were both at White Eagle, or how was this set up? They were both at White Eagle, yeah. (laughs) Holy caroling, my friend. Um, Let's just, again, pa Jose. Uh, Because Beyond, obviously, is one of those uh, independent promotions that are kind of really up there in in those. Where would you like to, you know, what promotions would you like to be a regular at or get your foot into a lot? I've always said beyond is one of those promotions you really want to get your foot into the door with mm-hmm. because it gets so many eyes on your brand through their product. And I can totally understand that, especially with the IWTV relationship, which is absolutely phenomenal. We can absolutely mm-hmm. get into that. Um, but beyond themselves, I mean, doing some back to backs like that, that's pretty fun, but a big day, uh, the talent, <laughs> uh, between those two events must have been amazing. Uh, were you part of either event or were you just spectating and helping or what's going on? I was, I was there to help. I was there to hang out and I like to go to these shows and build relationships with people. So that's really Excellent. the main reason that I went and I was already there for uh major pod. So I was like, I, I might as well just stay and help out and show face and, you know, and that networking, my man, you that's a big – that's one of the tools, you know, and, and I talk about tools in the toolbox to become a professional wrestler. That's one of those tools, networking. That one word alone is so very important, and one of those tools, without that, it's very struggle. It's, it's a big yeah, struggle yeah. to, to in, you know, further in your endeavor. Um, just going to – well, just take Sunday alone. You must have, you know, rubbed some elbows and got some – you know, made some contacts and got some more networking along with all those familiar faces and friends, you know, that, that oh, yeah. you've heard. Uh, that's the way to do it, though, right? Go to these shows. You know, you're you're taking a chance on yourself. You need more eyes. And that's the way to do right. it. Not only go to the shows, but go to the shows with the intention of meeting people and building these relationships. Because if if you want if you want people to have a good time meeting you, then you need to genuinely have a good time meeting them. Mm-hmm. You you need to go there and build these relationships with people and be memorable. Don't just go and hang out and sit and watch because then you blend in with everybody else. If you go there and make a good impression, then they'll remember you. Mm-hmm. And that's how but, it happens. Very well said because that continues from promotion to promotion, talent from talent, oh, yeah. fans to fans. Because now they start seeing the Leo Sparrow name. Uh, you know, popping around or being mentioned or having a graphic or you know what whatever. Yes. Um. And, and, and that's kind of how I met you. Um, is that, wait, let me, holy curly. Uh, tough and Talented or Test of Strength? Test of Strength. Okay. Uh, you were doing the, the merch stuff. You were not working per se in ring. That's correct, right? Correct. And now you, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, but I kind of take my phone. I run oh, yeah. around like a, a, a jackass. And, <laughs> and, we, and we have a lot of fun. But I like to take my my nine turning ten actually this uh, weekend turning ten my my nephew Big Jacob P. Oh, uh, Big Jacob P. Happy birthday! <laughs> yes, thank you, my friend. Uh, and that's how we really connected was more through Big Jacob P. than me per se going to the merch table and maybe introducing myself or what have you because <laughs> my guy was over hanging with Leo Spiro and I looked over and I go. I've never met that kid before, but I got to go figure out if Big Jacob P is being a pain in his ass. <laughs> so I go rolling over. I say, hey, you know, what's going on? We introduce each other, and I ask him if Big Jacob P is being a pain in your ass. Mr. Boys and girls, Mr. Sparrow was like, absolutely not. I love this little dude. And I'm like, 
I love you just for saying that because he's not always <laughs> like this. Uh, so, uh, so the talent that lets Big Jacob P and he loves, I don't know what it is. He loves to be behind those merch tables. I don't know if it's because of the people coming up or what, or hanging out with the, the talent and networking, if you will, mm-hmm. over there. Uh, but he really, he's done it more than once. And um, you took him over there and I absolutely loved you for that. And that's how we really uh, connected. Um, and I, since we are speaking again here, uh, I just want to thank you so much because uh, we all know uh, our, our children, our relatives, you know, the little ones, they're different when we take them out than when they are at home. And I'm not saying he's a devil, but he, he's, a, he's a handful. So he was awesome. He's, he's so much fun at wrestling, though, Big Jacob P, bringing the kids. And that's the weird thing about bringing him specifically because he gets caught up in the people that we meet at the shows more than sitting next to me or sitting in a chair, sitting next to people we know and watching wrestling. He's hanging out. He's running around. He's doing stuff with little kids that he's met. Almost wrestling to him is secondary. Having fun is primary at the wrestling mm-hmm. I'm out of go to wrestling I shows I... to have fun. So yeah, if, he's, if he's going there and he's having fun, mission accomplished. Definitely. And I know I ran out of wind there and I'm talking an awful lot, but wrestling excites me. You know, talking about wrestling excites mm-hmm. me, my man. Uh, but without ever you selling merch at the Tessa Strength uh, show there, we would have never met. So, I mean, these opportunities, that these networking, because here we are, you know. Um, I, I'm... I'm Boys and girls, I'm interviewing the Earth Day Champion, or Earth, what is that title called again? The Earth Championship. Okay, Earth Championship. Uh, beautiful uh, design, Thank by you. the way. It's very representative of what you're uh, what you're trying to say out there. Um, let's kind of jump into that, and I know we've got a lot to talk about uh, besides this, but it is a beautiful championship, and it okay. is. Uh, could we talk designer? Where, where, who made this? Where does it come from? What company does it represent? Why is uh, it, was there a tournament? Uh, was there a, a, a rumble of some kind? Was there a cage? Was there an all weapons cage thing that decided <laughs> Mr. Sparrow the championship? Let us in on all of that. So, the Earth Championship, uh, something I designed. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I designed all my shirts all my logos all my stuff like that it's just something that i taught myself that i thought would end up saving me money which it has and uh it's all since it's all like out of my crazy brain i just i like it more if that makes sense um and it fits my vision for what i wanted it to be and not somebody else's vision um it was gifted to me by mother nature herself because i am uh a warrior for the environment and if somebody can on their carnivore diet mm-hmm. beat me, then they deserve to be uh, the Earth Champion. But the okay. Earth Championship is me proving that my vegan lifestyle is better than everybody else's non-vegan lifestyle. Uh, okay, so Mother Earth has uh, Mother Nature has gifted uh, this, right. and so it showed up there- at my door one day. Okay, so there was no Kumite with Rob Van Dam or nope. nothing like that, right? Nope. Uh, okay. Um, now, this championship, uh, do, you, uh, do you defend this thing at all I of do. said events? That, oh, really? I do. Uh, so you are undefeated at this point because undefeated. you still have that championship. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so are you, are you going to do the old Goldberg thing, you know, like uh, – a hundred and seventy thousand million trillion gazillion and oh here are what are we doing here? It looks like that's the way it's going because I keep winning. <laughs> uh, you know, representing a championship. Uh, you know, you got that target on your back, my man. Uh, the opponents have been coming, uh, gunning for you for this championship. Oh yeah, whenever uh, I whenever I have a singles match at a show. They always say, can we can we make it for the Earth Championship? And maybe, like, our guy will – maybe he'll beat you. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll put the Earth Championship on the line, but he's not going to beat me. So the promoters yeah. are asking you uh, – Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that because 
they see there's creativity there. And obviously, wrestling is a, a huge, huge art form. It's just an empty canvas. And obviously, Leo Sparrow is starting to paint some really cool stuff on this blank canvas. Yep. So the promoters are seeing the creativity of one Leo Sparrow, what you're bringing to the table. And they're actually uh, coming to you and saying, hey, you're on our show. You have an opponent. But we want you, uh, you know, because our guy could actually take that strap from you uh, and make it just a little, make it uh, mean a little something more with that oh, you know, yeah, beautiful championship. Yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. I love that the promoters are taking that in. Uh, you know, that that that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, have you had to sell it? Have you had to sell any promoters on it? Like, hey, I got this championship, and I think it'd be you know a really cool idea if maybe me and one of your guys, because you know they could win that championship. Maybe one of your guys could uh, step up and we could do this. Have you ever had to kind of sell them on this thing or? Not really. They normally just recognize that I have a championship that doesn't belong to one specific company. It's more okay. of a, I don't want to say, I do want to say freelance championship. I kind of take it with me. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. That's the way your vision was for this belt though, is a yes, freelance, you know? Yep. Uh, that kind Earth. of seems it's Earth Championship. I, <laughs> it, I will defend it, it anywhere on Earth. <laughs> uh, you cannot tie the Earth Championship to any one promotion. It cannot be held right. down. Uh, so hey, I feel that. Uh, is there is there a story behind this championship? Because it's a very creative thing that you're bringing to the table here. Is there a background to this championship at all? So I. The championship showed up on my doorstep, right? Gifted to me by Mother Nature. But I, I felt guilty because I I didn't want to just accept it. Okay. Because I wanted to I wanted to win the championship. So I thought, how do how do people win championships? And the first thing that came to my mind was and I'm thinking like first ever champion. The only the first ever champion that popped into my head was Pat Patterson, right? He mm -hmm. won the Intercontinental Championship. A tournament in Rio de Janeiro. We all know that, right? So I said, I have to go to Rio to win this championship. Oh. So I, I put in Rio in my, uh, in, my, in my Maps app, and it drove me to Rio Grande, New Jersey. <laughs> and then I had a match for it there where I won it and became the first ever Earth champion. <laughs> That's a beautiful story, Mr. Spiro. Oh my God. It's, it's on my Facebook. If you, uh, you can see it. maybe it's on YouTube, I don't know. Oh, I absolutely love that story. Oh, I don't know why that's tickled me so. Maybe it's the way <laughs> you delivered it and told it so beautifully. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm a wrestler, I'm a storyteller. You are my friend. Uh, 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 let's talk about one of those tools in the toolboxes. Psychology, my man. Uh, that's it's not everybody's game when they're becoming or are a current active pro wrestler. Uh, gaining the psychology of wrestling, uh, is it something that was a struggle for one Leo Sparrow? Did it come naturally? Uh, talk to us about that. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't say it came one way or another because it's it's not something i think you can ever finish if that makes sense it's it's always a work in progress i could be wrestling in, in 30 40 years and it will still be a work in progress because it's continuously evolving so obviously there are basics that you pick up um but after that it's you're, you're always learning something new they again they being the talent um Wrestling is always a learning process. Absolutely. Echoing exactly what you just said there. Um, <clears throat> let me show you something real quick, if I may, because I just find it so, so kick-ass, if you will. And it's just sitting here. I don't know why. I, I, actually, I know why, because I was taking pictures of it after work, because I just thought it was so cool. And I almost, I might not give it to my nephew. I might keep it for a memento and keep it in pristine condition because i really do think this is something that's going to be valuable down the line and, and i don't mean to be selfish uh this saturday's event 
was at Blood, Sweat, Tears. And they had a mega clash. That was the, the event name. Well, there's a lady there. Her name is, oh, goodness, Brianna. Oh, cripe, I forget her name. But anywho, she made this, handmade this, okay? Each page, there's like 10 pages or so, maybe, yeah, it's about 10 pages. And I'm just going to show you one page. And there's the likes of Kylon King, Big Juicy, uh, the likes of The Haven, Sean Knight, and Jay Onyx. And we have, and they depicted, and I'll use this one as for, for a great example. This is for the ladder match, the, the championship for the uh, championship match that was upcoming. That's cool. Being, yeah, Lucas Chase against Dustin Flash Waller. And these are the pages. And it, it says right here, coloring pages for all ages, illustrated by at teal surreal dot art. And I absolutely thought it was just, I get chills talking about it because I think it's such a killer concept. Yeah. And it was amazing to see the kids have them and not only that they had like this little art kind of um metal cart there and they had crayons and pencils and they had blank paper and there was a, a little sign there that says take me make signs and they were having people just grab them and being able to have the kids and stuff make signs mm -hmm. right there i just thought it was a really really cool concept and i've never kind of seen that at a wrestling show yeah before. good idea <clears throat> but there it doesn't look so cute. I mean, I don't want to have it colored and stuff. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, keep it. You should have got a second one that you can color and one to keep. You know what? I do Next know time. the girl. I do know the the well, the lady who who made it. So I may reach out and be like, hey, maybe let me purchase another copy because they were for sale. You don't want to give those away for free. That's some that's some kick ass stuff. But a lot of time, effort, creativity. You know, because those are very great depictions of the wrestlers that we see. Uh, at the show. So that was really, really cool. Um, I want to spin back because my intros are really not that great. And I just said Mr. Leo Spiro or one Leo Spiro, but you gave us like uh, 12 monikers and I didn't know all of those. Uh, so if you could, uh, could you just go through those monikers one more time and then let's get on this train of, I want to talk about the character itself. Sure. Oh man, let's let's see how many I can remember off the top of my head. <laughs> All right, so we got the King of Kale, the Green Machine, the Son of the Sun, obviously the Earth Champion, um, Hardcore Herbivore, <laughs> Vegan Visionary, um, the the Prince of Produce. Shut up, stop. I know I got others. I, I wrote them down. Let me pull them up. Yes, please do, because that's seven and they're absolute money. Uh, see, it doesn't much. It does not take much to tickle us, the fans, Mister Sparrow. But yeah. this is such great creativity and so much fun. It really is, and you're incorporating it into wrestling. And your wrestling persona, and I really yeah, the effort and the creativity, my oh, friend. Oh, I and just, the actual nature boy, of course. The, wait, say that one more time. The actual nature boy. Oh, the actual nature boy. Okay, that's eight. So that's that's all of them. That's um uh, most of them. Those are the most uh, common ones. <laughs> okay, uh, that is great stuff. Um, and then I've got some hashtags like uh. Like Team Tofu. I wouldn't call that a moniker, though. No, no. But, you know, that's part of the whole thing, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hashtag Team Tofu. <laughs> I've never had tofu, but I I don't know. For some reason, I just can't bring myself to eat it. Is it, oh, is it like eating a white sponge? Like, what is it? If you eat it raw, yes. Oh, okay. I, I will not lie to you. But if you eat it um, prepared in a way that the person knows what they're doing it yeah. will be uh enjoyable and that's a protein tofu oh yeah okay because i wasn't sure where it sat in the you know the diet uh, yeah for protein. <clears throat> now you get you gave us all those again money slash fire uh <laughs> monikers those are great and now you're representing because you've already spoken on it a, a tad a, the vegan lifestyle this is true in your personal life this is no gimmick this is no character nothing this is true uh you know real stuff correct 
and you're taking it and bringing it to the table for wrestling. Uh, did you feel that that was your best avenue uh, to do because it's more of a natural thing and you didn't really have to come come up with something from scratch? Right. Um, I went to I went to school for business, right, for uh, marketing, management, stuff like that. And if that was my top choice, but my second choice was earth science. Okay. So it's it's something that I've always been interested in in my personal life and i love wrestling and i wanted to do wrestling so i just tied the two in together because they say you know the the ones that you can kind of build from your own personal experiences or you know like uh nicole matala she's taken her you know her native american heritage and incorporated it and right. man what she was previous to what she is now woo, 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 woo. uh i congratulations yeah. to nicole for doing that but they, they come more natural. They come easier. And you get better results out of them, though, That in the long run. That's, that's right. what you want. That's the thing. I'm not, I'm not like, playing a character. If, right. if it's me, if it's things I'm actually interested in, it's going to be my authentic self. Mm-hmm. Um, the gear. Let's talk about the gear because you come through the curtain or down that ramp or what have you, uh, whatever scenario. Uh, the gear. <laughs> The gear, what's on it? What does it represent? Uh, fill us in on what you're wearing when you come to – because you look fantastic. And then I, I would like to um, uh, push the, the gear designers because we always like to speak about and be able to have – if talent is looking for gear and they might, you know, watch this, you can they can look them up or something, you know? Yeah. Well, my gear was designed by me, so – Oh, oh, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, I'll be too helpful in recommending gear design. <laughs> okay. But my first gear had leaves and vines going up the leg. On the back, it said plant power. On the front, it had an LS. My my current gear, um, it's like a shiny metallic green because um, it's more flashy. I like it like that. It's got some tassels going up the leg, which I love. Um, on the back, it says, I think, oh, it says uh, Leo Sparrow Certified Vegan. It's got, like, the, the the real Certified Vegan logo, except it has my name on it. <laughs> yes. And on the front, it has um, my face, half of my face, and half is the earth. Oh, wow. Very, uh, cre- again, the creativity, boys and girls, bringing all sorts of creativity uh, and then to my the wrestling. Booth- my boots and my Earth Championship made of vegan leather. Oh, uh, so again, incorporating everything to what you believe in and your lifestyle and and, and everything that's going on. And you are th- this is this is what we talk about. Don't do it half-assed, boys and girls. Hmm. Take what you're doing, embrace it a million percent. Because right. if you do it like that, and you really just embrace it and, and, and really own it. You never know what you can accomplish with what you're trying to accomplish in wrestling because that's what you need to do. In there. And that, you know, that's just in life in general. But in wrestling specifically, when you have a persona, a character or, or a gimmick, if you will, um, you got to own this thing and run with it hard, you know. And Mr. Leo Sparrow doing his thing. Actually, the eyes have been catching you because I've been seeing you a little bit more, doing some more work, getting on some more promotions. How is it going right now for the promotions? Are you reaching out to uh, men? Um, how do I put this? The ratio. Is Leo reaching out to a lot of promotions comparing to some promotions reaching out to you? Uh, is it starting to come back a little bit in the ratio? Um, I would say it is starting to come back a little okay. bit. Um, I do a lot of reaching out because – you, no matter what level you are, you can still be told no. So there's always going to be somebody that will tell you no. So I'm going to reach out because I know that there will be some people who will um, not want me. And I have no choice but to accept that. That's just the way it is. But um, I do reach out because I like going different places. I like meeting different people. And they, they, nobody can message me if they don't know who I am. And how do I get them to know who I am is I message them first. So I I can't be afraid to shoot somebody a message and say, hey, my name is Leo Sparrow. I want to wrestle on your show. Um, And then just really make my best uh, impression that I can. Absolutely. Um, 
excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> because you're, you're betting on yourself. So you are your own salesman. You are your own marketing agent, and, and, and all of the things that entail uh, getting a product out there. You're, you're that person, you know, you know, especially being in, you know, wanting to do business. That's a big plus right there because your mind is working a little bit differently than maybe some of the, the younger upcomer uh, wrestlers because you're thinking of it on a, on a different end spectrum, you know, than just the wrestling. How do I market it? market myself right. and whatnot. Um, and I just wanted to kind of spin back to the gear one quick second, because as you were describing, you know, I love the tassels and, and, and what you were describing is the inspiration of putting your gear together and designing it. Do you take it from wrestling? Do you take it from other walks, uh, parts of your life or how does it come together like that? I, when I designed my gear, I looked at some of my favorite wrestlers and there if they had similar gear i would take different aspects of what i liked about the gear um so one of my favorites of all time is Dolph Ziggler and when i one of the times i did work for WWE i was backstage and i saw Dolph Ziggler and he had these tassels down the leg and i was like that is the coolest like that looks awesome and i stole it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that's uh, uh, uh part thanks, of the Mr. inspiration Frank. <laughs> i almost started with that but I, I i'm i'm pushing that back a little bit further um <clears throat> excuse me uh these inspirations though um art is a very it's it's very hard maybe music maybe wrestling maybe uh <laughs> just drawing or what have you any forms of art uh, are very hard uh, to be creative and get something on that canvas just to get going. And then once you do, you can't stop. It seems like you're doing some really cool stuff. You have a really great uh, vision of what you think, you know, this Leo Spiro should represent, what he should look like. And, you know, not all promotions are interested in what you're presenting. But that's with any wrestler, though. Not all of these wrestlers get on all the shows. So Right. You know. And it's motivating because if, if – uh... If somebody is not interested, then I go out to a different promotion and show them what they're missing and, and make them want to have me the next time. Mm -hmm. uh, not only, boys, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Not only does he incorporate his lifestyle, uh, but it, I think he even adds, he kicks it up a notch, as Emerald would say. God, I missed that guy on TV. He was something. I love watching that dude. <laughs> when you kick it up a notch, bam! Uh, Leo Sparrow does that because uh, one of my dear friends that I've met on the wrestling scene, <clears throat> one Joey G, he has a podcast, uh, the Sign Rip podcast. I like to call him Jackie G just to F with him. It is what it is. Uh, and himself, his friend Kelsey, and uh, a couple others, I believe, but them, those two specifically, I think, uh, were at a, a Creative Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Could have um, been. And you threw salad at spinach. Is, is, oh, sp just spinach. It wasn't like, and this is what it's been driving me mad all day wanting to ask you this question. I was thinking, was it like a, a full toss salad, a chef salad, an antipasta, a Caesar salad? I didn't no, know what uh, the heck it's going just, just spinach. Okay, just spinach. I have my so green you... bag of spinach in my entrance and I throw it at people. Oh, um, good guy, bad guy, because I'm trying to trying to get this vision here of uh, a good guy throwing throwing it out. It could look something different than when a bad guy takes a spinach and really uh, throws, throws it at the You're fence. Right. So You're right. It, it really depends because when I come through the curtain, within the first few seconds, I can catch the vibe of, oh, they really like me here or they want nothing to do with me. When I am in rural Pennsylvania, they do not care about vegans or what I have to say. <laughs> so I walk out and I throw a spinach right in their face. I say, you, I don't care. I'm going to throw it right in your face. You want to boo me? I'm trying to make you better. I'm trying to make you healthier. So I just throw it at them. I'm like, sit, eat it, whatever. And then I go to like, uh, like these ISPW shows and 
for some reason, they just like me a lot. So I have no reason to throw it in their face. So I go up and I give everybody spinach. And then we all throw it in the air like uh, LeBron James with the powder. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's a celebration of one Leo Celebration. Sparrows. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. I, you know, it, I like to title each episode differently because they all have their own flavor because every person has their own personality. Uh, a spinach celebration for all. Uh, is that a good title? Love it. A spinach celebration for all. That's a beautiful title for one Leo Sparrows. Yes, I can see now. I can envision something like, like there's got to be maybe a dozen of you in this nice little beautiful circle. They're on one side because they're sitting as fans. Leo Sparrows in the front of them because he's an he's an athlete. He's Leo Sparrows. He's coming out with his his message, his vision, and he tosses the spinach. I can see it all. It's a beautiful picture. Thank you, Mr. Sparrows. Thank you. Ah. Uh, I love Mr. Sparrows. I didn't know how this was going to go because we've never really chit-chatted about wrestling right. because I saw him on the other side of the merch tables that we were speaking earlier. I didn't even know if the kid wrestled or not. You know, so I, I'm, I was so pleasantly surprised to see this personality, this charisma, this beautiful professionalism because when you come out, you look like a damn wrestler, my friend. And I know you're not the biggest guy. You know, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, everybody wants to see a Bobby Lashley or a, a gigantic guy be a, a professional wrestler. But not everybody is. Um, so when you come through the curtain, even though you're not a bigger guy, you look like a professional wrestler because of your gear, your presentation. And, again, I applaud you on the, uh, as a fan because I hate right. seeing guys half-ass it. Right. Thank you very much. Uh you do both the good guy, bad guy, uh, whatever the situation calls for. So you've never been like, okay, my envision is this, and I'm a good guy. It's just never kind of stopped that one buck or the other. You just kind of take whatever, you know, either side. Yeah, I, I can't force people to like me. I can't force them to hate me. Although I have been told I'm a very unlikable person. I can't. Okay. Uh, I can't force them to hate me, but um, I just, I go with the flow. And if they like me, they like me. If they hate me, they hate me. I just accept it either way. I'm just being who I am. I'm going to say 20, 30, 40, probably 40%, maybe 45, 50, 55, 60% of the talent have always said, uh, this is me. I'm not playing uh, a character. I'm not taking someone from a video game. I'm not taking something from a comic book. You get what you get, but wrestling, obviously, they say turn it up to 11 or 1,000 or amp it up or, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, but I, uh, probably a good 60% of the talent uh, that I've talked to personally, this is me, and, and I'm just kind of doing it in wrestling turned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I can totally appreciate that because, again, just to reiterate, even from the beginning, makes the best uh, – not the best. It, it makes the most successful professional wrestlers, if you will. You know, because you kind of sure. you, you're not you're not pushing against the grain, trying to make something happen and making us believe in something that you're trying to present is basically what I'm trying to say, I guess. Uh, really taking it by the reins and running with this. Uh, have the promoters or some of the talents been like, dude, uh, what? what the hell is this? Like, this isn't, you know, like, well, what is this? Or have, you know, been very accepting and because not all promoters dig. Um, and, and I'll have to say kind of gimmicky stuff. And it kind of comes with, if you will, with the, the vegan, the vegan presentation. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, there've, there've been some one, one promoter that I was friendly with. He was like, dude, I don't get it. Like, I don't see it at all. Um, I don't know what you're going for. And I said, okay, uh, it's like a challenge. Let me let me prove you wrong. So I went out and I did it and I came back and he was like, I totally understand now. He said the second you walked through the curtain and you threw spinach at people, he said, I get it. He said, you didn't even need to wrestle. All you needed was that character stuff and it was yes. perfect. So I said, yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I know. That's and the, that's the thing, because I I have the vision. 
not everybody has a vision, but it is my job to make them align with my vision. They don't they don't need to see my end goals and everything like that, but they need to be with me along the way to kind of get what I'm going for. Right. Be, so, be with me. Oh, go go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> wrestling is weird. Uh, to, to quote uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, wrestling is fickle. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I, this whole thing that you're presenting here, is this all the brainchild of Leo Spiros? Was there a collaboration with any family, friends, or peers that have brought this whole thing together? Um, no, <laughs> I wanted to say yes, but no, just me. Wow. The creativity. I know I've said it probably seven times or eight times now, but that's what it takes to be a great artist, uh, Leo. And here we are. Uh, I think you're doing a fantastic job. And, and again, doing it very well on your own, pushing yourself, got your brand, you're marketing yourself, you're spreading your wing. Uh, let's talk about where you where you started. How long have you been in the business right now? Oh, man. I um, Last July was when I had my first match. Wow. Okay. So uh, a, a, a year and a month. Now, obviously, you went through proper training. Uh, you didn't do it on your own and try to be a, a Shawn Michaels, maybe in your backyard or something. You went through proper training. Uh, right. Where did you train at? I trained at Creative Pro Wrestling Academy. Uh huh. It, it was Creative Pro then, uh, definitely, because uh, Jackie G and, and company they took a like a three hour trip or something to go to that show nice. specifically. Uh, what a bunch of great fans, people. Um, they bring so much energy. They, they bring do. so much support and love. And Yeah, the creative pro fans are great. They know who to boo. They know, they know who to cheer. <laughs> uh, so you haven't been in the business very long. That's very evident. But you're making such a connection with the fans, and that's one of the hardest things in a rest, uh, professional wrestler's career is to get us on board to boo and or cheer you. And I mean, there's, there's wrestlers that I've talked to that have been around for like five, six, you know, 10 years that are just still, I'm still trying to find that, that really, that time to really connect with the fans and pull them in. You seem to be doing that very quickly in your young tenure right now. Uh, that's the toolbox. You, yep. you have these tools. So I am figuring that with the proper training being at Creative Pro, you have been very well taught. You had some great trainers over there. Uh, who uh, Talk to us about the trainers if you could. Sure. Um, Creative Pro has multiple trainers, but the head trainers are um, Brian Myers, Pat Buck, and Max Caster. Mm -hmm. Now we see Max Caster. He's on the indie scene. He's doing his thing. I've seen him maybe a couple times live because we are in two totally different areas and I didn't really see him much, but then Tessa strength brought him in and Tessa strength is my home base, bro. And I just, I have a blast at Tessa strength. And I, we were outside and I asked Mr. Castor, I go, I do this thing it's called the Kincaid files. And I just get up all in your face. And, you know, I lift the good guys and I kind of, uh, you know, mess with the bad guys. I go, is there any way I could get maybe a minute of your time? It doesn't take long. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And it was the very first time we ever met. So we do this thing. It lasted five and a half flipping minutes. <laughs> I don't know how, uh, but it ended up lasting five and a half minutes. A week and a half, maybe two weeks maximum goes by. He gets on AEW Dark. Right after that, we know what the hell happened. My guy's already over here signing on dotted lines and being part of things and doing. Wow. Things escalated quickly for one yeah. Mr. Max Caster. Um, I, and I know you mentioned Brian Myers and Pat Buck and such and excellent talent, excellent minds. They've all of their account accomplishments and whatnot. But I really wanted to pull uh, Mr. Max Caster out uh, just because of that note right there. So it was like, again, very recently, I was able to get a little promo with him, and it was absolutely amazing. And it's the only one I got, and I cherished that one because it was Mr. Max Caster at that time because he was so hot. He was having, a, you know, the no gimmick year. We're, we're making his 
Mm -hmm. was starting to make his gear and he was looking absolutely fantastic out there. Part of the Shook crew with uh, Bobby Ocean. Or Bo <laughs> oh, don't, oh my God, don't tell Bobby, Bobby Ocean, Ocean I said that. And no, though. no, and don't tell Bobby Orlando I said that. Oh my God. I have to edit. I've never edited an interview in my life. I have to edit this one. That's oh insane. Do my not, do not God. Oh my God. Oh, my heart is a pitter patter right now, Mr. Sparrow. Oh my you made god! Made mistake. <laughs> That's okay. uh, oh, Max Caster, Mr. Platinum, Max Caster, Bobby Orlando, and Bryce Donovan. Oh my god! I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I'll let you catch your breath because I do have to uh, wrap up soon. All right. I'm sorry. But, I'm um, sorry. So I have a, a few shows coming up. I'll be doing um, next. August, um, sorry, not next August, this August, next weekend, <laughs> August 27th, I will be in Albany, New York. August 28th, I will be in um, at the Retro World Expo for Blitzkrieg Pro Wrestling in Connecticut. September 3rd, I will be at SSW, which is uh, near Wildwood, New Jersey. September 10th, I will be at Fight Pro Wrestling, which is also in New Jersey. So, you can catch me then. Follow me on any uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at No Steak All Sizzle. You can see it right there. Right? You can see that? Uh, personally, I can't. Oh, okay. It says Leo Sparrow at No Steak All Sizzle. ProWrestlingTees.com slash, no, uh, slash Leo Sparrow. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Leo Sparrow. Uh, and that's where you can find me. If you like what you heard today, then I would really appreciate your support. And I thank you very much in advance. Very well said. All the details right in order. He was ready for that. I knew that you could just tell he was ready for all of that. Um, and I know you mentioned the WWE, and I and I, I swear I'll let you go lickety split quick. Uh, and I'm not talking behind the scenes, and I'm not talking, you know, the whole experience. I just wanted to ask you one question about that entire thing. Mm -hmm. uh, being choke slammed by a guy. That is taller than seven feet. He's almost at seven feet. Omas, almost, however you want to pronounce it. He's seven foot three. And Mr. Leo Sparrow took a choke slam. Uh, God, did I feel so bad when I saw that on my television? Uh, how does one take that and survive? Oh man. Oh man. Um, I told you about that table that I landed on. <laughs> yes. That was nothing <laughs> compared to getting choke slammed by Omas. Choke bomb, <laughs> I should say. Yeah, um, yeah, choke bomb, yes. <laughs> I thought I died and pooped my pants at the same time. I did neither. I did neither. But uh, oh, okay. I couldn't get up if I tried. Uh, man, I, if I have to say one thing... <laughs> Better you than me, my man. Better you <laughs> than me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the experience was phenomenal. You got to do something that many won't be able to do. And again, that's one of those. I applaud you for pushing you yourself, marketing yourself, and getting the eyes seen on one Leo Sparrow. Excellent job. Excellent job. Thank you. Uh, boys and girls, you know I can talk for two, four, seven, twelve hours. Mr. Sparrow's got stuff to do. Mother Nature calls. <laughs> Mother Nature calls. <laughs> uh, this has been a, a fine conversation with Leo Sparrow's getting to know him. Thank you so much for spending the time with us, the fans, my friend. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Turn the Pop with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, the Earth Champion himself, Leo Sparrow's. <laughs>